And from the stories of Surah Al-Kahf, within two ayat, Allah Azza wa begins talking about Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And, and the transition is very immediate. So Ya'juj and Ma'juj were locked up. Then Allah says, we will leave them there. And because Ya'juj and Ma'juj are one of the major signs of the Day of Judgment, so it is relevant, it is munasib, that from Ya'juj and Ma'juj, immediately the conclusion of the, story, the, conclusion of the surah begins. And that conclusion talks about about the Day of Judgment, about Prophethood, about the concept of the Prophet about the knowledge of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So from Ya'juj and Ma'juj, immediately Allah Azza wa Jal then begins talking about Yawm Al-Qiyamah. وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ And the trumpet will be blown. فَجَمَعْنَاهُمْ جَمْعًا And all of them we will gather together. Each one of these people of these stories, every one of them, and all of their opponents and their friends, everyone in this context will be gathered together. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, وَعَرَضْنَا on that day, we will show Jahannam to those who rejected it. We will show them a real showing. We will display them a real displaying. The showing of Jahannam is mentioned many times in the Quran. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Fajr, On that day, Jahannam will be brought forth. And the Prophet told us about this ayah of Surah Al-Fajr that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command 70,000 angels to be dragging Jahannam. 70,000 angels will be dragging Jahannam. And so, so Jahannam will physically be brought onto Yawm Al Qiyamah so that everybody can see it. The Muslim and the non Muslim will see Jahannam. And Allah Azza wa mentions this in the Quran that لَتَرَوُنَّ الجحيم, that surely you are going to see Jahim. Then you will see it with the Ayn Al Yaqeen, with the eyes of reality. So Muslim and non Muslim will be shown Jahannam. But in this verse, Verse, Allah specifies only kafir. Why? Because the word is not seeing. Latarawunna is for everybody. As for al ard, and ard means to pass through or to pass. Ard will only be for the non Muslim, for the kafir. Ard. This will not be for the Muslim. So, aradna jahannam. We will display a ard, and ard has more meaning than just to see. We have literally brought them close to it, let's say, or brought them over it. We have made jahannam ard for those who reject it. وَعَرَضْنَا جَهَنَّمَ يَوْمَ ذِي الْكَافِرِينَ عَرْضَ Who are they? الَّذِينَ كَانَتْ أَعْيُرُهُمْ فِي غِطَاءٍ عَنْ ذِكْرِ They were those who had covered their eyes from my reality, from my remembrance. وَكَانُوا لَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ سَمْعَ And they were not able to hear anything. Now, throughout the Quran, from Baqarah all the way to the end, there is this motif of deaf, dumb and blind. The one who rejects the commandments of Allah, the worship of Allah, the dhikr of Allah is called deaf and dumb and blind. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifies very clearly, I am not talking about the blindness of the eyes. فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبُصَارِ I'm not talking about the blindness of the eyes. وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبِ أَلَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ But this is a blindness of the hearts that is in the chest. So when Allah says that their eyes were covered, they could not see, they couldn't hear, this is not the physical perception, the physical hearing. This is the spiritual seeing and hearing, which is what? To recognize the truth and to follow it. This is what Allah is saying, that they put a veil on their own eyes. Summun, bukmun, umyun, fahum la yarjiun. They refused when the light of Islam, and by the way, so the motif of deaf and dumb, it fits clearly because the Quran is called light, and Allah's revelation is called the light. So anybody who doesn't see this light, then he doesn't deserve to have eyesight. And this is exactly what Allah says in Surah Taha, that when we resurrect them, we will resurrect them blind. And so the man will say, Oh Allah, why did you resurrect me blind when I could see in this world? So Allah will say, our signs came to you and you were blinded by them. So you shall be resurrected blind. So because you didn't use your eyes properly to recognize the truth of Islam, to recognize the truth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is as if you have put a veil on your eyes. You have blocked your ears from listening to the truth. And all of this brothers and sisters, it underscores a very fundamental point of our religion of Islam. Islam is simple. It is logical. It is rational. It appeals to the mind, the body, the intellect, the soul. And that is why, as we have said many times, people from every faith, they will accept Islam. 
Any sincere person when they look at the simplicity of Islam, you don't need to have a PhD in philosophy to unwrap Islam. Islam is meant for humanity. Islam is meant for the average person and the intellectual. It is meant for every single level of society. Islam appeals to every single characteristic of man, his body, his heart, his mind, his intellect. So anybody who rejects Islam, knowing what Islam is, this person from our Sharia's perspective has no mercy. However, in the, in the Um al Qiyamah, however, the one who didn't know Islam, who was not exposed to Islam properly. Suppose somebody lived an isolated life. Or suppose somebody only heard misinformation about Islam. Suppose a person never really studied Islam and all of the news he heard about it was false. So let's say from Fox News, okay? Everything is Fox News, okay? What's going to be the verdict of a person who only watches this news channel, right? And has no idea of a real Muslim. Well. We speak in generalities, we don't, we don't speak in specifics. Generally speaking, somebody who was not exposed to the truth of Islam and did not have the opportunity to find out, according to our Sharia, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test them a special test on Yawm al Qiyamah. Now, some people say they will be forgiven. Some Muslims say this, I'm saying. And this is not academically sound or even intellectually sound. Because if they are forgiven for being jahil, in this case, we should zip our mouths and never give da'wah to Islam. Let people remain jahil. Because if Allah will forgive them, then why should we teach them of Islam? No, the ahadith is very clear. The one who n n never heard of Islam, Allah will test him on Yawm Al Qiyamah. And Allah will ask him, what would you have done if my Prophet came? And what do you think the man will say? I would have believed, I would have. So Allah will say, okay, I will send you. I will see now. And Allah will then after a while on your al Qiyamah, send an angel. And that angel will, they will recognize this is an angel. And that angel will say, Allah has commanded you to fling yourselves into a fire. There's going to be a fire that he has. So whoever trusts Allah and the promise of Allah, you're telling me to do this, oh Allah, I will do it. Sami'na wa ata'ina. Whoever throws himself into that fire, that fire will become his Jannah. That fire will become his Jannah. Because that's the trust, the tawakkul, the yaqeen. Do you really believe me? It will look like a fire. You will see it a fire. You can feel the heat. But if you actually jump into that fire, it will be converted to Jannah. This is a hadith in Muslim Imam Ahmed and other hadith. That Allah will test those people who never heard of Islam with that test. And those who said, I'm not going to jump into any fire. Well, then they're not fully believing in what Allah's promise is. And so they will be then punished with the real fire. So these verses, they apply to those who were exposed to Islam and they covered their eyes to that reality. As for those who were not exposed, as we said, they have a different uh, uh, category on the Day of Judgment. Uh, and now Allah threatens the Quraysh, and Allah threatens those who have heard of Islam and still reject it. Did those who reject my faith, those who reject Islam, did they really think that they could take my own creation instead of me as their protectors. These gods that you have invented, they are my servants. They are my creation. I have created them. And instead of worshiping the creator, you, you came to the creation. You took this idol, you took this rock, you took this statue, you took this stone, you took this angel, you took this prophet, and you made this angel or prophet into gods instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did you not think that the Creator would call you to task for taking His own creation and making them into gods? <inaudible> Verily, whoever does so, we have made Jahannam a place for him to remain. Now, as is usual, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after criticizing uh, those who reject Islam, He will then praise those who believe in Islam. But Allah then finishes this criticism with a very profound question. Should I not tell you of those who are the greatest losers in terms of actions? What is the worst category of losers? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ ضَلَّ سَعْيُهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا They spend their whole lives in misguidance. All of their actions were leading to the wrong path. وَهُمْ يَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ يُحْسِنُونَ صُنْعَ Even while they're thinking that they're doing something good. You see, if you want to go to a particular place, you have to follow the road. If you take the wrong road, if you take another highway, no matter how many hours you drive, 
No matter how sincere you are, no matter how beautiful the car you're riding in is, you will not get to the destination. In order to get to the destination, you need to follow the path. And this ayah is a very scary ayah. It's a very scary ayah. Umar ibn al-Khattab once he passed by a group of people, uh, the, the hermits, you know, the monks, they had renounced this world, they're living completely separate lives, isolated from society, they're fasting every day, and from the perspective of, uh, uh, you know, of, of mainstream Islam, they're worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they claim that uh, Jesus is the son of God, or they claim these things, then this is not something that is Tawheed. So Umar ibn al-Khattab, he saw them, and he saw they have spent their lives dedicated to this type of worship, and he began to cry. He's overcome with emotion because in one perspective, these hermits have done more than what most of us have done, than what Umar himself has done. They've cut themselves off from the world, living very difficult lives, fasting, praying, but they're fasting and praying to an icon, to an image. Umar began to cry, Umar ibn al-Khattab. They said, what is the matter, Umar ibn al-Khattab? So he said, he started reciting this verse, قُلْ هَلْ نُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِالْأَخْسَدِينَ أَعْمَالَ أَلَّذِينَ ضَلَّ سَعْيُهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ يَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ يُحْسِنُونَ الصُّنْعَ These people are doing so much good. They think they're doing good, but it's the wrong path. They're not worshipping Allah. Now again, by the way, I want to be very clear here. We as Muslims speak in generalities and not specifics. These particular hermits, Allah knows what their fate will be on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. It is not allowed for any Muslim to say, you're going to Jannah, you're going to Jahannam. We don't speak like this. We never speak like this. We speak in generalities. Those who worship Allah, will enter Jannah. Those who reject Allah will enter Jahannam. This is a general thing. We don't say, you know, Tom, Dick and Harry, Tom is going to Jannah, Harry. No, we don't speak in specifics. So when Umar is speaking, he's speaking in generalities that these are a group of people, they're worshipping the wrong God and they're doing so much. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here affirms, and this is an important point, brothers and sisters, good intentions, Good intentions don't necessarily get you off the hook in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot do an evil with a good intention. We cannot, let's say, rob from the rich in order to give to the poor, the Robin Hood type of attitude. It's a good intention, but you cannot change the laws of Allah. And of the fundamental laws of Allah, only Allah deserves to be worshipped. And anybody who worships other than Allah, that person is simply not on the straight path, no matter how sincere they are. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, these are the people, they have rejected my signs, they have rejected meeting me, and so all of their deeds will be in vain. And on the day of judgment, we will not give them any weight. فَلَا نُقِيبُ لَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَزْنَا Hadith in Sahih Bukhari, our Prophet said, a man of this world who was considered mighty and noble, ذو جاه, somebody of great respect, and Samin, very big and very fat, he will be brought forth. And in this world, he was given much izza. And on the day of judgment, he will be put on the throne, on the, on the scales, and he will not even weigh the wings of a mosquito in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. جناح بعوضة. It doesn't matter what the people thought of you. In this world, he was given jah. And then to underscore the point, the Prophet means that he was a big man. It doesn't matter. How people look at you or how physically you are is irrelevant. Allah, the Prophet told us that Inna Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum wala ila ajusamikum walakin yanzuru ila qulubikum wa ila a'malikum. Allah doesn't look at how you, Allah doesn't care at how you look. Allah doesn't consider how you look. Your suwar, your ajsam. Allah doesn't look at that. What does Allah look at? وَلَكِنْ يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَعْمَالِكُمْ But Allah cares about what your heart is and your deeds are. So Allah is, is telling us here that those who rejected them on the Day of Judgment, he, they will not have any weight with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.